good morning my dear children welcome all of you to this economics class today in this module i am going to teach you about the ninth chapter in indian economics named environment and sustainable development in my last class i have explained about the role and the functions of environment today we'll discuss the rest of the topics in that chapter next we are going to discuss about the steps and the strategies to attain the sustainable development before that let me explain what is sustainable development we know that environment and economy are interdependent and need each other hence that development which ignores its repercussions on the environment will destroy the environment that sustains life forms and what is needed is sustainable development development that will allow all future generations to have a potential average quality of life that is at least as high as that which is being enjoyed by the current generations this is actually what is meant by sustainable development so that is by using it carefully we can use the resources for the present generations as well as we can yes preserve it for the future generations also and we'll see what are the different strategies for sustainable development the first one is the use of non conventional sources of energy children you would have studied about the different sources of energy the conventional sources of energy as well as the non conventional sources of energy right yes so here also we can see the india is hugely dependent upon the thermal and hydro power plants to meet its power needs both of these have adverse environmental impacts the thermal power plants emit large quantities of carbon dioxide which is a green house gas i have explained about the isn't it the global warming right so in that context i have explained about the emissions of the carbon dioxide and what are the repercussions of that emissions upon the environment it also produces fly ash which if not used properly can cause pollution of water bodies land and other components of the environment hydroelectric projects in undate forest and interfere with the natural flow of water in catchment areas and the river basins so here children we can see that the what adverse impacts of thermal and hydro power plants to meet its power needs so that is the actual difference between the conventional and the non conventional sources of energy using the conventional source of energy it's not that much harmful for our environment whereas the uses of the non conventional source of energy here we can see about the thermal power plants actually what it emits large quantities of carbon dioxide which is a greenhouse gas actually it harms the what yes the health of the human beings also it also produces fly ash which if not used properly what happens to that it can cause pollution of the water bodies land and other components of the environment also and what about the other one the hydroelectric projects we know that hydro power plants means yes the power plants which use 
the water to produce electricity. So here also what happens to that? It undate forest and interfere with the natural flow of water in catchment areas and the river basins. Actually, yes, it also harms the nature, forest and what all the yes, natural habitat around us. It actually affects the nature. Next, wind power and solar rays are cleaner and greener energy sources but are not yet been explored on a large scale due to lack of technological devices. What is that? Wind power and solar rays are cleaner and greener energy sources but are not yet been explored on a large scale due to lack of technological devices. Technological devices has not been developed to what? Yes, to promote the use of the wind power and the solar rays. So children, this is the first word. Yes, strategies to steps and strategies to attain the word. Yes, sustainable development. The next one is LPG gober gas in rural areas. You would have heard about the LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. So households in rural areas generally use wood, dung cake or other biomass as fuel. This practice has several adverse implications like deforestation, reduction, green cover, wastage of cattle dung and air pollution. So to rectify the situation, subsidized liquefi liquefied petroleum gas is being provided. It's a clean fuel. It reduces household pollution to a large extent. Also, energy wastage is minimized. In addition, the gober plants are being provided through easy loans and subsidies. For the gober gas plant to function, cattle dung is fed to the plant and gas is produced which is used as fuel while the slurry which is left over is a very good organic fertilizer and soil conditioner. So here you can see what is that? To use what the liquefied petroleum gas and the gober gas were in rural areas. Right? So they use actually wood, dung cake or other biomass as fuel. But what happens you know? It has several adverse effects also. Deforestation leads to deforestation. Reduction in the green cover. Wastage of the cattle dung and air pollution. So to all to rectify this problem, what is that? Subsidized liquefied petroleum gas is being provided. It is a clean fuel. It reduces household pollution also. And the energy wastage is also, we can minimize the energy wastage. And the EC availability is also related to this gober gas plants. It is easily provided through Yes, easy loans are there and subsidies are given for such gas plants are also. So for the gober gas plant to function, cattle dung is fed to the plant and gas is produced. We know that. What, what, how to produce the gober gas? Yes, using the cattle dung. So how, how, what is the process of producing this one? First we have to, yes, the cattle dung is fed to the plant and the gas after that when gas is produced and that gas we can use as fuel while the slurry which is left over is a very good organic fertilizer and soil conditioner and what all the wastage arises out of that that wastage we can use for what yes it's actually a organic fertilizer we can use such cow dung for what yes that wastage we can use for as a fertilizer for the plants as well as yes for the trees etc so children these are the two strategies to promote the sustainable development so children i hope this session is clear for you so thank you children for watching this video